Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to our review of Chapter 4. The title is Science Finds Its Feet. In this chapter, even though there are a number of scientists, I'd like you to read the entire chapter, take notes on it, but also focus on these three scientists, Rene Descartes, Christian Huygens, and Robert Boyle. Okay, let's get started. Uh, I think there's a great opening sentence uh, in chapter four, and that is, science is written in the language of mathematics, as Galileo realized. Gribben points that out because the first scientist that they're going to profile is René Descartes, known for an amazing discovery in mathematics. And uh, this is a diagram from Galileo's notebook where I know it's a little hard to read, but basically the math involved in uh, some inertia experiments that he did in one of his notebooks from um, a rolling ball. René Descartes uh, was an amazing mathematician and his breakthrough discovery was one day, as the book describes, he was idly watching a fly uh, circle in a room and realized that at any one point in time, that fly's position could be detailed, could be described in three numbers. We know it and we've learned it as X, Y, and Z, but before René Descartes, no one had used Cartesian coordinates. That's why it's named Cartesian coordinates after René Descartes. Um, the next scientist that they talk about, they, they talk a lot more about Descartes, and please make sure you read through that. The next scientist they talk about uh, is a man by the name of Cassendi. Cassendi is referred to as an atomist because he was one of the first thinkers to bring back the idea of atoms and molecules. Uh, a lot of scientists before this time had a difficult time with the concept of what a vacuum is. It could atoms, could there be space where there was nothing there? Uh, and there's a discussion of that in chapter four. And his name was Cassendi. Uh, the next scientist that you'll read about is Christian Huygens. Huygens did a lot of his pioneering work with light and with optics. Uh, here's a portrait of him He's from Holland. And to the right, as you can see, the Netherlands Bank has uh, a picture of Huygens on their money. Uh, and they have a picture of the sun and the planets and the phases. Uh, he did a lot of work in astronomy. So Huygens was a mathematician, a physicist, and astronomer. One of the things that he worked on was something called an aerial telescope. Uh, all the parts of it are in the top part of that diagram from one of his books. And the bottom right shows you how it actually works. And imagine it's a large refracting telescope that doesn't have a tube. There's a lens up there at the top, and there's a lens at the bottom that Huygens is looking through. But uh, this was uh, called an aerial telescope and was a great leap forward for observing the sky. As a matter of fact, some of uh, Huygens' work also led to the tradition in Holland of putting clocks in church towers. Now, this might not seem like a huge leap forward. However, this was the first time that the average person would know the time of day. Uh, it, the practice started in Holland with Huygens, but then spread throughout Europe and is still a tradition today. The next scientist that you'll come across is Robert Boyle. And uh, the author, Gribben, talks a lot about Robert Boyle's father, whose name was Richard Boyle, and the incredible life uh, that he had and what led to uh, the upbringing and the affluence that Robert Boyle enjoyed so that he could dedicate his life to science. Many people regard Robert Boyle as the founder of modern chemistry, of the way that he uh, looked at chemistry. He was also one of the main founders of the Royal Society. His assistant, Robert Hooke, will read about a little later, actually in the next chapter. And Boyle's Law, many of you studied Boyle's Law, the relationship between air pressure and air volume came from many of, much of the work that he did, where he discovered it. Um, he also took a much, much more rigorous approach to chemistry. That's why he was considered a founder of chemistry. Um, at the time, chemistry was called alchemy, and it was really considered a, a combination of magic and uh, theory. But Boyle was uh, really thought that strong scientific methods should be put to every type of experiment. Boyle is really uh, a larger-than-life figure and, uh, from all accounts, quite a wonderful person and scientist. Here's a picture of some of the instruments that uh, Boyle used from his uh, books. 
Uh, the ones on the left uh, are related mostly to air pressure, and you can see the same for the ones on the right. Two of Boyle's most famous books were A General History of Air, defined and begun by the Honorable Robert Boyle Esquire. Notice that now the books are, uh, well, these are the beginning of the books in English. Uh, Boyle was an Englishman, and uh, his book on the right is called The Skeptical Chemist. He talks a lot about chemistry has to be a series of very rigorous experiments. Toward the end of this chapter, we read about Marcello Molpagai. And Marcello Molpagai had a wonderful, wonderful microscope, and he could see things that other people couldn't. And even though William Harvey had talked about the blood circulating through the body, it was Molpagai who actually discovered how it happened. And it was through the discovery of tiny, tiny capillaries which connected arteries and veins. These are some of the diagrams from his book on the right. Uh, fascinating, but really uh, Mulpagai couldn't make his discoveries unless he had a microscope that was good enough to make those. So remember, please read and take notes on the entire chapter, but as far as the midterm is concerned, focus on the achievement of the following scientists, on Rene Descartes, on Christian Huygens, and on Robert Boyle. Um, I will only ask questions on those three pioneers of science. Good luck and um, continue reading and learning about the history of science.